Welcome to this seminar on spiritual warfare. The last session we talked about the different aspects of the occult, as we have been talking about uh, not only witchcraft, but the area of sorcery and divination, uh, necromancy, different uh, ways that uh, the occult is expressed. But for these uh, to really have their success and, uh, and to operate freely in society, there must be a certain degree of acceptability. It must be portrayed as interesting. It must be portrayed as intelligent. It must be portrayed as beneficial. Uh, so uh, there is a whole mindset that must be created for this occult uh, environment, this, uh, this evil um, plan and purpose to actually be unfolded. So I want to talk about another aspect of spiritual warfare. I could call it a layer or a, a different um, area. When we look at the different enchilon of evil in Ephesians 6, we could, we could probably put that into the area of cosmic powers or, the, or, or, um, or uh, domains, uh, because it has to do not with the geographical uh, limits, but more of a mindset or a paradigm, a philosophy, or something that can affect a large number of people at the same time and go across cultural or geographical boundaries. We call this in Ephesians 6, I mean, chapter 2, as the course of this world. That word world is an interesting um, expression. It can also be very um, misunderstood because usually when we think of the world, we're thinking of the planet Earth. We're thinking of the physical nature of things. But in the Greek, we have three different words that in English we translate as world. The first is that of okomene, and this is the uh, word used to describe the physical earth. And we see this in Acts 17, 24, it says, God who made the world, okay, and all that. And that word world there is okomene. And uh, because the earth belongs to the Lord, Psalms 24.1 says this, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and all those who inhabit it. They belong to the Lord because of creation. He created them, they are His. And uh, the world belongs to the Lord. It's not the enemy. He's not the God of this planet. He's not, this is not His legitimate place to, to rule. It isn't. It is the Lord, this physical creation, nature, belongs to God and reflects Him in many ways. The second word used is ayanus. And ayanus is where we get the word eon or age, or it has to do with a specific uh, determined um, time period. Some translations uh, would put in even generation. Uh, or they use age. Like uh, I'll show you an example of it in Ephesians, in um, no, in uh, Second Corinthians four four it says the God of this world or age has blinded the eyes of the unbelievers. Okay, so we have this God of the age or God of the as as many translations say world. It's not the physical world. It's the time period. Satan has a time period in which he influences. It's not forever. It's a, a certain time and it, it deals, and there's different times or different aspects of each time period. There's also in Colossians 2, 8, talks about the elementary spirits of the world or of the age. And so you have different time periods that have different paradigms or different uh, aspects about the way people think and the way they act. And usually from age to age, there's a certain transition that happens and there's resistance to that kind of change. Usually it, it, it uh, translates in the area of revolutions or social upheavals or revolts or uh, things like that in which there is a major shift in the way that the evil would dominate over a certain people group. Um, we have this um, uh, expression in the 60s, the age of Aquarius. It was a mindset. 
It was a mindset that talked about um, free love, talked about a resistance to authority. It, it uh, talked about, um, uh, you know, uh, do your own thing, <laughs> live your own way. No one tells you what to do. It was a time, age of anarchy. It was an age of, of a superficial bliss. Uh, the drug culture came in during that time, became popular. Uh, but it was resisted by the materialism of the post-war generation. And so they then came against this age of Aquarius, these 60s hippies <laughs> mentality. And then you have those uh, generation, the, these baby boomers, uh, who were very rational in their uh, expression or way of thinking, very modernism in the sense that they put all their weight in, in the scientific method, and this was a, you know, the, uh, it had to be proven, it had to be measurable, it had to be uh, scientific to be acceptable, and then they resisted that Generation X that embraced a postmodern relativism in which uh, truth was very subject to change and from, uh, from person to person, culture to culture. And this relativism, uh, shocked the previous generation. So you see these upheavals, but in all these ways, in, in this area of the age in which a person lives, they're subject to these philosophies, these elementary spirits or principles that govern people's way of thinking. The, the enemy is involved in this type of format, uh, this type of, uh, this level, to uh, dominate and influence generations and to lead them along a path of self-destruction. And then the third word that is used is the word cosmos. And that's a very interesting word because uh, that comes up a lot in the area of, of just um, understanding these cosmic powers, the, the way that, these, that the enemy uses um, ideas and memes or words to spark revolutions and things. It has to do with, um, with a domain, uh, with a area of influence, how to influence culture, how to influence education, how to influence government, how to influence finances. Uh, it, uh, it, is an, it is the major influencer. It's this spirit of the, of, um, of the world, and when we talk about the world as an enemy, this is this uh, primary use of the word cosmos. It's a way of thinking that comes against the way God has revealed in the scriptures. It's taking words that everyone may embrace and agree with, like the word justice, and make it a format or a way to pervert a person's sense of justice and um, or a uh, the biblical justice into a um, counter revolution or a uh, basic anarchy and so you see this social justice used against biblical justice you have a certain more a certain morality used against biblical morality and uh, and so there's these conflicts of worldviews conflicts of of perspectives. The next one, uh, the next uh, session, I'm going to talk more in depth about God's perspective as revealed in the in Zion or the understand and the Greek model that the most of the Western world has then embraced as their uh, way of thinking or their um, mindset. But this cosmos is a is a uh, uh, is a worldview in the sense that, uh, in verse, I'll give you an example in the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 2.12, it says, did, you did not receive the spirit of the world, okay, but you received the spirit of God. In other words, there's a difference between the spirit of the world and the spirit of God. It's interesting that in Matthew 13.38, when it says, when Jesus is explaining the parable of the sower, he says the field is the world. And it says the seed are the sons of the kingdom, the good seed. 
And so the sons of the kingdom of God are sown into the world. Now this is not talking about the earth. It's not talking about the physical. The word there is cosmos. So we are in this place that uh, we are in a cosmos of this age that is dominated by philosophies and uh, ideas and memes that are contrary to the word of God. And yet we've been sown into it to influence it, to bear fruit in that environment and to transform it. We're to take uh, that, uh, uh, that ruler of this cosmos and dethrone him and replace him with the sons of the kingdom, with the godly influence. It's so important that we are those, that seed. We're that seed in this environment that tries to conform us to its uh, thinking, to its values, to its mores, and yet we've been sown into it to influence it and bring it back to God. <coughs> it's so, uh, you know, uh, it's so important to understand that our purpose is to establish the kingdom of God here on earth in this world environment. We're, uh, we are ambassadors of the kingdom. We're to bring forth godly principles and influence conquering uh, what the enemy has taken as to the minds of people, as to the values and the mores that people have embraced. Satan's purpose is only to destroy. It is to pervert, it is to corrupt, it is to cause one another to war against each other, to bring forth strife and offense so that they would destroy one another and that they would embrace his mindset and go down that path away from God. And they call it progress, but it's not progress. It's not going forward. It's, <laughs> is going away from God. And God is calling us to return. He wants us to regress to him, go back so that we can go forward. And this is the only way that we can overcome this. Uh, in Psalms 110, verse two, it says this, the Lord sent forth from Zion, your mighty scepter. And he says, rule in the midst of your enemies. <laughs> Rule in the midst of your enemies. See, this is talking about a conflict of ideas. Now, the next session, we're going to talk about the contrast of Zion and the sons of Greece, as, uh, as, as spoken of in Zechariah chapter 9. But I just want us to, to understand that our warfare in this arena of the world is in the area of ideas, okay? That's why I go back to that whole concept of our, of we're in this courtroom. We're, we're dealing with arguments. We're dealing with words. Um, and we must, we must know how to engage them because words do influence people. They do mold people's character. They do incite them to certain actions. And so our battle in this arena is to uh, hold on to the truth as our rock upon which we base our life, to hold on to what, uh, to biblical truth, to biblical principles, and to the word of God which lasts forever. All these other words, all these other uh, philosophies are like sifting sand. They do not last. Some don't even last a generation. They go from one thing to the next and the generations fight against each other because things are changing. But it is all to lead the, uh, the mankind along this diabolic path of self-destruction. The enemy is definitely not our friend. And he portrays himself as being very intelligent and very um, uh, wise in how he would portray the philosophies of our age, trying to get us to embrace it. But when it deviates from the truth, it only leads to destruction. The next session, I'll talk more about the difference between these basic elementary principles and the Word of God. 
God bless.